A warm welcome to all of you and a heartfelt namaste. I, Anuradha Sharda, would like to thank you for watching my videos, sharing my videos, liking them, and writing in your comments and suggestions. Today, we are going to talk about the Lagna and the Lagna Lord. But first, what is the Lagna? The Lagna is your connect on this planet. And what does it show? Why is it important? Why is it important that we are born in a particular lagna? What does that reveal to us? The characteristics of those signs and in a subtle manner, subtle manner, it is the nakshatras that will come out to us and will tell us the inherent qualities that we have and the inherent qualities that we need to work on to hone those skills. And how are we going to hone on those skills? How are we going to work on them? It is the Lagna Lord, the one which does the work for the Lagna. That will tell us how we are going to work on those skills. So if your Lagna is, say, cancer, then you're born to be a very emotional person. You're born to, uh, with a lot of nurturing qualities. You are born with a care and concern for the elderly and the child. And you have a lot of knowledge within you. You have an in-depth ability to assess people. And you also are a very caring and a loving and a soft-hearted person. And where will you exert all these qualities? You, uh, it's not that one exerts these qualities on all the 12 houses. No, it is an, a, you are a person of that type, but where would you see these qualities working in a very, very determined and in a very predominant manner? You would be able to see these qualities working, say, if, where you are able to plot in or see where your moon is posited. So if your moon is posited, in the fifth house, it is towards your grandparents that you have these very strong feelings for. Your children take up a very, very strong uh, implication or they, they take up very big space in your life and you're very, very possessive, very caring and very loving about your children. Though this moon is debilitated in the fifth house, but nevertheless, that is the area that you will be working in. You might feel responsible for a grandparent and would definitely work towards giving them a better life. If this same moon is placed in the seventh house, then your area of love, care and concern would shift towards your partners, be them uh, your professional partners or your personal partners. That is the area where you would want to exert yourself. Again, that love, care and concern can be for everybody in general because the seventh house is a platform which gives you uh, a public platform. So you can, you can be working in an industry which is an healthcare industry. So we have to be very, very understanding of the house uh, the and the planet but also understand that the sign matters because if it's in the fifth house of scorpio it can show that you have a um, very very strong past life connect with your children or your grandparent and if it's in the seventh house of capricorn it shows that your professional relationships will have to be very uh, be very strong and you are very much biased towards your professional relationships because Capricorn is the sign of profession in the natural zodiac. We are all aware as far as basics are concerned we are all aware of what a sign means, what a planet means and what a house means but the synthesis of all of these is very important for a very correct prediction for a very pinpointed prediction. Another example that I'm going to give you is, say, supposing you are an Aries Lagna. So what does that mean? It means that you as a person are, is a, are a very energetic person, born to do a lot of leadership work, always on a go-getter, one who's always creating something new or setting up something new. 
Mars is the Lagna Lord. So Mars is the doer and Mars is all about energy. So you're very emphatic about doing things, but where are you going to do them? If this Mars is posited in the 10th house, definitely your career matters and all your work and your energy would go in your career. Again, Mars gets big belly and for this Lagna, Mars gets exalted in the 10th house also. So you're extremely a career oriented person with just few goals in life and that is getting work done on all levels. And uh, very emphatic about it. Now, if the same Mars is to be placed in say the third house of, uh, uh, so the third house for this Lagna would be Gemini. So you would be putting in a lot of effort in explaining things to others, making a lot of friendships, doing work as a trader, as a contractor, as an agent. You could also be a very creative person, but your work would be very aggressive. Why? Because it's Mars energy that you're putting in there. So even when you're talking, a lot of aggression could come out. A lot of spirit would be found in your talk. And when we are, and if this very Mars is present with Mercury there, so this Mars and Mercury would give you, give this third house a different you. What would that be? This person would be very, very acclimated or very attuned to what the others are thinking and would have the ability to hit at the right nails because Mercury gives you the idea and Mercury gives you the ability to speech. Mercury also gives you great amount of creativity to write. So this person can also be very creative in their writing approach. Now, again, if this Mercury and Mars is aspected by Jupiter, then the person would be a very great teacher because you would be able to speak very wisely. And people, you could also be a counselor. You could also be somebody who could uh, give therapy lessons. But if this Mercury is aspected by Rahu, then you could be a cone man, or you could also be a fiction writer because Rahu represents uh, a lot of uh, fiction or a lot of lies. And when you're writing fiction, you put in all your imagination into it. So this could make you a fiction writer or it could also make you a fine cone artist who would know how to trick people very, very nicely. So this is how we analyze a chart keeping in mind a lot of things. And this is what I'm going to teach you in my basic course, where I will do the basics on planets, um, houses, elements are very important because elements, tell, even doing analysis by elements will give you a lot of clues and elements are also very important. And I would also be teaching you about signs and houses. Finally, PAC, position, aspect, and conjunction. And how do you assimilate the entire thing to, to give the chart a great deal of uh, precision of prediction? As I've uh, covered all that I'm going to teach and then practical examples are definitely going to be worked on so that you can hone on your uh, readings as a reader. But Practice makes a man perfect. And so practice is something that gets us all the answers. Today, we will talk about Lagna Lord placement in various, uh, various uh, houses to see how we are able to connect the houses with the Lagna Lord. So to begin with, if the Lagna Lord is placed in the first house, it is very important for the person to pay a lot of attention on their own self-development, to grow as a person, potentially in a very big manner. If it's Mars, which is placed in the sign of Aries as a Lagna Lord, then it gives you the energy to do a lot of work and it also gives you the ability to get work done from everyone around you because Mars is the general. And and Aries is the one who is the leader. So as a leader, you have the ability to get work done. As it aspects the 7th house and the 8th house, any friction that you have, you have the ability to overcome those oppositions. If it is Mercury 
sitting in its own house and being big belly because it's in the lagna then it is definitely going to make you a person with just one mind frame because let's not forget mercury is also money and all these basics are things that we are going to learn in the basic class so one just one thought that i have to grow big and i have to earn lots of money this is very important for the mercury lagna people if if uh, the lagna lord is in the second house in such a case a person is very very particular about their family such a person is also very particular about their education wealth knowledge uh, and also if it's a it's a planet which is which gives you like jupiter then such a person would be very uh, has to have unless and until there is a aspect negative aspect or should i say an aspect of a planet which is not so good like say rahu or saturn on the lagna or the second house then the person will have very strong sense of ethics and morals because the second house also represents your ethics and morals and where would those ethics and morals be placed so we need to see which sign it belongs to if it's the sign of capricorn you would do it for your business but if it's the sign of taurus you would do it for money but also for your family similarly if it's in the sign of uh, say uh, the the sun that is in leo then you would be putting in a lot of your ethics and values about how you showcase yourself to the others how others perceive you because moon is also about the masses so now if we move on to the third house if the lagna lord is placed in the third house the third house as i've shown with the example of mars and aries is the house of creativity it's the house of communication and it's also the house of uh, your courage depending on the lagna so if the lagna is uh, a venus house or if the lagna is in taurus then the third house would be the house of uh, cancer then in such a case people would be very much oriented to do good work social work be courageous take take creative steps to help others and be very vocal about it can form small organizations or homes to help others similarly if it is uh, jupiter where the lagna lord is jupiter and in the third house you could be going and if it's the sign of aries uh, sorry it aquarius then aquarius jupiter is learning aquarius is research and the third house is all about having the courage so you could have the courage to go in for research and come out victorious in all your learnings like in the case of marie curie with sagittarius lagna and her jupiter very well placed in the sign of aquarius if you have your third lord as sun you have your sun and it's placed even then if it is placed in your third house uh, sorry your lagna lord as sun and placed in the third house third house is the house of creativity and it is also uh, the house of going out reaching and getting everything done sun is the largest planet for us so you want to be larger than the largest as the case of sharukh khan who has proven that even with a debilitated sun one can go higher and higher still but let's not forget the sun is also the karak of father so the father could be on a low level because again this is i have explained in a previous video where say where i say that the karaka jeev karaka can be having a problem but your initiation your courage will never know any bounds when sun is in the third house and i've also explained this in one of my videos on sun now we move on to the fourth house if the fourth the lagna lord is in the fourth house it's all about mother it's all about motherland it's all about getting your work done with a lot of masses and you will always have a connect with people in the uh, in the masses you could also have a lot of connect with old people because uh, the fourth house is also about the old people 
and cancer is also as a sign of the natural zodiac is about death and dying so all these things can be an area where you could connect it is also the area where security matters so this is the place where you would be wanting to see what kind of security you are going to get so if the lagna lord is venus and it's in the fourth house of capricorn so the security that you're seeking in life could be financial security if if the lagna lord is mars and it's in the fourth house then the security that you're kind of seeking can be uh, security at home if it's aries if it's scorpio then you could be seeking security in big organizations you could be seeking security in incomes because that is aquarius that we're talking about so we have to see as i repeat again and again and that does bear repetition because the houses are equally important as the signs because the sign give the color and houses also give its own color the planet definitely has a very different hue the two planets can be different and the entire scenario can change when we are talking about the fifth house for the fifth house if the lagna lord is placed in the fifth house then your grandparents your use your ability to use your own intellect to come to a conclusion your hard work giving you fruits and your children matter a great deal to you that is now supposing uh, your fifth house happens to be aries then your intelligence is something that will see you through the way you you will want to work with people who are intelligent because it's the sign of uh, sagittarius and it's moving into the sign of uh, guru is or jupiter moves into the sign of aries it is very important for you to check out that you initiate your children to do something beautiful in life you initiate your children to be go getters you as a preacher would always reach out to others to do something encourage those people to do something because guru is wisdom uh, and uh, jupiter is wisdom and aries is going out and doing something and fifth house is also the house of students so you as a teacher would be reaching out for students to do something beautiful when we are talking about the sixth house the sixth house is not just the house of illness and um, and problems or uh, obstacles or a kal mrityu that is sudden death it is also the house of competitions it is also the house of overcoming competitions to reach your goals and sachin tendulkar also has his sixth lord moon sitting in sagittarius his uh, lagna lord moon sitting in the sixth house in sagittarius and he has always been able to overcome every every problem that he is faced with a lot of determination and grit so moon is also here the mind and the mind if it is focused properly it's given enough backing then he would be able to overcome the uh, problems if it is in case uh, somebody has their mars sitting as a lagna lord sitting in the 6th house it's a very good position because mars aspects the lagna gives you enough impetus to work so hard that you drive competition away and if it is saturn sitting in the 6th house it gives you the humility as a lagna lord it gives you the humility to work hard enough to be humble enough to be persistent enough and work greatly now coming to the 7th house so if your lagna lord is placed in the 7th house you are dedicated towards your spouse and as i had shown earlier said earlier you are dedicated towards your spouse you are dedicated to your work you are dedicated to becoming known in society because the 7th house is the outer world so all these things done but it also aspects the lagna so you will have probably there are chances that trying to please so many people you're moving away from the self there's a very strong need for you to go within you aspect your own self as as the lagna lord is and try to see how much it is working in your favor and not working in your favor 
now it also depends on the sign if it's if it's uh, the if you connect it with the leo lagna and you see sun placed in aquarius such a person would have a very strong opposition as well as a very strong love uh, for the spouse but a very strong opposition in the spouse also let's not forget the uh, the seven house is always the house of an enemy or is always the house of a person who's diametrically opposite from you so there's a very strong chance that people you come in contact to in life or make association with will be very different from you when we move on to the eighth house then uh, if the lagna lord is placed in the eighth house you would often realize that there's a lot of dying death and such things transformations that you are associated with but what kind of transformations that question again pops up so that will be told to us by the sign so if the lagna lord is in the second house uh, sorry taurus that is for um, the uh, even for the libra lagna if lagna lord is in the eighth house in its own sign of taurus you could be bringing about a change and transformation in your uh, food habits or in the habits of other people also food are relating to food and um, uh, eating habits if it is in the uh, sign of say pisces then you could be bringing about great deal of change and transformation in people's thought process you could be moving in into a meditative system you could be opening an ashram there's so many things that you could do if if the same lagna lord is in the 8th house in um sagittarius then there are so many chances that you can become a guru who would be able to transform people's life and the way of thinking so because sagittarius is the sign of guru and the 8th house is all about transformation let's not forget that shukracharya or venus is also the daitya guru so this way we can understand where the transformation is going to happen if we know where it is where jupiter or uh, where the lagna lord is sitting if your lagna lord is sitting in the 8th house it's sagittarius lagna and it's sitting in the 8th house in cancer then you could be bringing about a lot of change and transformation in healthcare industry or you in the banking industry because jupiter is all about money and fourth house is a house of a house of securities and it is also about banking and money so there are a lot of things that the sign will let us know in pinpoint precision for the other factors also when we are talking about the ninth house the ninth house is all about learning and education the the ninth house is being one of the greatest orators and teachers who can bring about an impression uh, in the lives of their student and the ninth house is all about higher learnings it is also about being fair and just it is also the house of the vaidya or the doctor and it is also the house of the lawyer so these are a very there are a lot of things that we can check out from these uh, houses we can check out a lot of uh, information from the planet which is associated and where it goes and sits so this ninth lord can give a very different relation a very different result when it is mercury sitting in taurus where it makes you a financial guru and if it is venus sitting in the ninth house in um, yeah, the sign of gemini it makes you a, a person who inspires others because again guru and the ninth house connect where you're talking so much that people are able to get a lot of inspiration out of you so these two planets and two different signs but the same house will give you a very different connotation altogether finally when we are coming to the 10th house the 10th house is the house of hard work it is the house of labor it is the house of uh, appreciations it is the house of your boss and it is also the house of climbing up the ladder depending on which sign it falls in if it falls in a artha sign uh, that is 
say if it falls in the sign of Virgo, it can make you one of the greatest businessmen. And uh, you can have the ability to understand which is the what what can be done with even the smallest of things because Virgo as a sign gives you the ability to be circumspect. It makes you uh, financially prudent. And when Jupiter is sitting here, you have the ability to kill uh, with a lot of foresight, make a lot of killing with the foresight. And if this 10th Lord is sitting, being Mercury is sitting, even it is debilitate, uh, debilitated and is sitting there in the sign of Pisces, it can make you an inventor because the, uh, the 12th sign of the Zodiac is all about inventions, letting go and connecting with the energies so that is why we can see that happening in the chart of yeah e is equal to mc square the great einstein so as we move on to the 11th house if somebody has their lord lagna lord placed in the 11th house of the natch of uh, of the zodiac or for the map for that matter in the 11th house big association companies also Ability to impress your friends, making friendships with so many people, caring about others, having an ability of forward thinking, an ability to be great in your thought process can give you such a great leverage in the world. The 11th house is also the house of Icha Purti or getting all your desires fulfilled. So if you want to have any desire, that's the best place uh, for your Lagna Lord to sit and to aspect the fifth house of your luck. Finally, the 12th house. When planets are placed, when the Lagna Lord is placed in the 12th house, there is a lot uh, of transformation going to happen in your life you are going to come across situations where you will be totally different a person from who or what you were and you would be transformed into a very different entity but you may not even uh, on years uh, after years pass by you may not even recognize that fact because you are absolutely as far away as possible from the lagna so it can be uh, depending on the sign it can tell you where you're going to lead. So for Aries, if the Lagna Lord moves into the Pisces, you could be a very determined person trying to get as much as possible, but slowly and steadily you can become very detached from things because Pisces is all about detachment. You may have an ashram of your own or you may lead a life, very quiet and a happy life in an ashram, a very secluded life. In the same time, if you're... Lagna is uh, is that of uh, uh, Scorpio, and the Lagna Lord Mars moves into the twelfth in a uh, in the sign of Venus, that is in Libra. You could have been born as a very secluded person, but then you turn out later to be a very vivacious person who then goes out and learns how to make partnerships and how to strive in partnerships and get the goals done. It is all because the Lagna Lord chose to have a great deal of transformation. So this is all about the placement of Lagna Lord in various houses. Aspects, conjunctions dramatically change a lot of things. As I have told you right at the beginning of the video and will be teaching about this in the upcoming basic course. So if you're interested, do write into us or register directly. Till we meet again, stay safe, be happy.